Hello magic practitioners of all shapes and sizes, my name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you for tuning in to the 25th episode of our cantrip series. I introduce to you Mold Earth. Usable by the druid, sorcerer, and wizard, and was found in the Varaness, Elemental Evil Player's Companion. Let's take a look at some mechanics here. The cast time is one action, the range is 30 feet, the duration is instantaneous. The effect, you can cause one of the following. Excavate an area of loose earth. Cause shapes and colors to appear on an area of earth or stone. You can also create difficult terrain. The components are just somatic, so you just have to you just have a gesture, which I think is great for stealth encounters. The school is transmutation. Now let's take a look at the full description so we are all on the same page. I'll also put this down beneath in the video description, so if you want to follow along there, you can definitely do that. You choose a portion of dirt or stone that you can see within range that fits within a 5 foot cube. You can manipulate it in one of the following ways. If you target an area of loose earth, you can instantaneously excavate it, move it along the ground, and deposit it up to 5 feet away. The movement does not have enough force to cause damage. You cause shapes, colors, or both to appear on the dirt or stone, spelling out words, creating images, or shaping patterns. This change lasts for one hour. If the dirt or stone you target is on the ground, you cause it to become difficult terrain. Alternatively, you can cause the ground to become normal terrain if it is already difficult terrain. The, the change asks lasts for one hour. If you cast the spell multiple times, you can have no more than two of its non-instantaneous effects active at a time, and then you can dismiss such an action or such an effect as an action. All right, so a lot to unpack there. I would like to point out that I have seen the animated spellbook for this video, and although Z's math checks out technically, I don't think this spell is nearly as useful as he makes it out to be. It's still incredibly useful, and it's still one of my favorite cantrips. I'm actually in a game right now where the uh, magic, uh, one of the fighters took the magic initiate feat just for this spell, and he has been using it to pretty cool effect recently. So. For starters, the thing that I really don't like is if you're dealing with stone and we are in a stone dungeon, there's not a whole lot you can do. Like you can change the shape and or you can change the, the color and appearance and you can make difficult terrain. The real power of this spell comes from excavation. It really does. Um, the examples are you can create some massive pits, and that's what the animated spellbook recommends you do with it, which is fine, but if you don't have a dirt floor, it's really, really difficult to do that, right? Um, alter and also, it, it has to fit within a five foot cube, so uh, an example of this kind of biting in the butt would be with a stone, right? If you have a boulder that is a six feet by six feet by six feet, so a six foot cube, based on the way the spell is worded, you can't affect that in any way, shape, or form because the stone itself doesn't fit within a five foot cube. It's not worded so that you, you have a five foot area to play with. The, the stone itself has to be five feet or a maximum of five feet so it's not anyways I'll, i will get to how it can be used that being said let's take a look at some of these alternative uses so you can use it to create as well as excavate graves so long as they're not stone graves if, if they're if they're dirt graves, more particularly loose dirt graves, you can excavate them immediately, which is great for necromancers. Like, it's fantastic. Every necromancer should have this spell regardless. Thematically, it's also very cool. And you can also use it to leave warnings or threats on rocks or the ground itself, anything like that. 30 foot range is kind of decent, and the fact that it doesn't require a verbal component make it, make it very useful for just terrifying people. 
You can also use it on di to create difficult terrain and kind of tuck out your opponents really early, especially if they're small size and they don't have all that movement. It'd be really great, and yeah, naturally, you can use it to create holes as well. I'll, 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 I will give it that. I just don't think it's as effective as Z makes it out to be. Like if I was a DM, as soon as I got like 15, 30 feet down, I'd be like, great, now you hit bedrock. You can't excavate rock, it has to be of earth, or dirt rather, and loose earth in particular. So that means clay would be unaffected, it means mud would technically not be affected. Like, the way it's worded it makes it so you can rule lawyer it into oblivion. Recently though, we have been able to use it in my campaign to make a wall, which is very cool and very useful and really helped us out. Um, that being said, if you have any cool stories involving this spell, or if you have any crazy ways to use it, I would love to hear that down below in the, or in the comments, and I'm sure everyone else watching this would as well. That being said, I hope you have a, guys have a great day, thank you for watching, and as always, happy casting.